Coming up on Cardinal Bistro, today we have a French toast bake, a loaded apple pie, an apricot baked brie, and a champagne mocktail. Let's get started. How you guys doing? My name is Nick, and today we will be cooking. How's it going guys? My name's Evan. We're going to be making some wonderful dishes for you to enjoy. And I am Karen Thomas. I am the district chef here at Hayes High School. So today I have a few students with me. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to do some holiday recipes for you. Um, with Christmas and New Year's coming, I thought it would be nice if uh, we just do some quick and easy things. Uh, and I'm going to teach the boys how to do some fun stuff maybe for mom on New Year's morning. So, what do you guys want to start with? You want to start with French toast? Uh, yeah. French toast, right. All right. All right. We're gonna start with the French toast bake. So, what are the ingredients that we're gonna work? With? Ingredients today. Uh, we're gonna start with um, beautiful Portuguese sweet bread. You're gonna need eggs. You're gonna need cinnamon. You're gonna need a little bit of vanilla, and you're gonna need a little brown sugar. And if you would like, you can top it off with little sliced almonds. But that's optional. So. I've cubed some of the sweet bread. I'm going to have Evan work on a little bit more of the sweet bread just to show you a little bit what you can do. If you don't want to cube it, you can just rip it. But Evan, go ahead and take it away. So before I begin, we'll talk about knife safety. Knives are very dangerous, but they're also very useful. I'm going to cut down the middle, guarding my knuckles to make sure I don't have any accidents on the school. And then I'll cut, and Nick, do you want to rip to show a little voice if you want? I would love to rip. Now notice this technique. Great job, man. I mean, Evan. <laughs> so I now have the diced pieces of delicious, succulent Portuguese sweet. All right, Nick, go ahead and rip it. Now you guys can either rip, you can cut, whatever you want to do. Sometimes it's better if this is a day old, you want to leave it a little stale because it'll soak up everything. Nicely. I'm going to use a nice two inch pan. Make sure you grease the pan before you put the bread in because you won't be able to get the French toast out after that. Now we're going to go with the eggs. Evan, have you ever whipped up eggs before? You know what? I'd like to see a demonstration. Okay. All right. So you want to. I've cracked nine eggs in here. You're going to need nine eggs for one sweet bread. And then you just whip up the eggs. You want to give it a try? All right. Why don't you try it? That's perfect. I feel like I got the form down. You got it. Nick, I feel like you want to try a little bit. I would love to. Like I say, it's just cooking, guys. It's not brain surgery. All right. That looks good. Now, what we want to add to that is the cinnamon. Not all of it. Take your uh, tablespoon there. Add three spoons of the cinnamon into that. Awesome. Ah, uh, you just dig in there. You pour it out, you're gonna have a cloud in your face, you end up choking. That's one. Yeah. One. <laughs> Two. Three. Nick, right you, wanna, there. you wanna start giving that a whirl? Now, your cinnamon might stick to the sides of the bowl, so you wanna. A little scrape action, maybe? Yeah, give yeah. a little bit of scrape in. I got you, district chef. Evan? One, tape, uh, one teaspoon of the vanilla goes into this. That's why I like the Get every little bit 
bit of that off of that pan. We're going to incorporate all the bread into that mixture. We don't want any dry bread in this because that won't be good. Now, Evan, if you want to take some of those sliced almonds, I would love to. And top it off with that. You can use any kind of nut you want. You can use the almonds. Some people prefer pecans or walnuts. Whatever nut you like. I never met a nut I didn't like. So whatever nut you want to use, you go for it. Like a little technique here, a little. There you go. It's coming out. It's rolling anyway. <laughs> Don't use them all because we're going to use some of those nuts in our pie. Delicious. All right. So that's going to go into the oven on. 300, I don't want to bake it too high for about 20 minutes. And top it off with some powdered sugar. And this is what it should look like. We're going to try in the end, Evan. We're going to try a little of everything. All right, moving on. We're going to go right into our apple pie. I think you guys are really going to love this. One of the most nothing, traditional pies. Is nothing like pie an apple, apple pie. All right, so I cheat. I used a saw block crust today. Thought it'd be easier for you guys than rolling out pastry crust. Is that this? Yeah, but that one we're going to use for something else. So we're going to start here. Evan, if you'd like to add our apples, I've already sliced up some apples and peeled them. You can use whatever apple you prefer on your pies. From uh, what I hear, everybody uses a different apple. I like Mac. I like Portland. I like to use a mix of both. Um, I like a little watery apple because I put a little dry ingredients into this pie. So it's going to absorb a lot of that. So It's all about the balance. It really is. So, Evan, give that. And, and be generous, babe. It's the holidays. There you go. There's no dieting on the holidays. Awesome. All right, to that you're going to add one, yes. yep, this is just a little bit of white sugar, let's say about three tablespoons, oh, okay. sprinkle it all around, no, you can use that, I've already measured it out for you. Oh, this is three tablespoons I, right there? I made it easy for you. Sprinkle it all and around that's it. that's why she's the district chef. And then you're going to add one half cup of brown sugar, not packed. You don't want to pack it. You don't want to pack it. You'll have too much. This one's for you. Thank you. It's all about generosity around the holidays. You might have to kind of <laughs> have to kind of do that and sprinkle that around. brown sugar. It's going to give it a little bit of a different taste. Not everybody uses brown sugar in their pies. I happen to be a big fan. All right, now, little different twist on an apple pie. We're going to get some um, graham crackers that I've already put through the food processor. You can use any kind of graham crackers you like, and you're going to do a healthy portion of this. Just sprinkle it all around. Fingers? You could use your hands here. Would you like to assist me, Evan? Put your fingers in there as well. I would love to. And be generous with that because we want to soak up some of that moisture because I do use an apple that tends to create a lot of moisture. We don't really want to juice that juicy of a pie. Keep going, guys. Just let us know, Karen. All right. That looks good to me. Now to top it all off, we're going to add caramel to this. And I've already opened up some caramel. So I'm using these caramels that you buy for caramel apples that you melt down. Um, if you want to go easier and just use a caramel sauce, that's fine too. And I put about nine of them. I just arrange them around the pie. They'll melt into the pie as it cooks. And then, again, nuts, the way to go around the holidays. So why don't you sprinkle some of those sliced almonds in there as well. Walnuts work really well in this too, but I figured seeing we were already using the almonds, we would just stick with the almonds in the pie as well. That looks incredible, guys. Thank you. All right. 
again, the easiest way to do a pie, just buy the rolled out stuff. God, rolling out all that pie dough, it's just not my thing to do. How easy is that? That was very easy. Very easy. So now just a little crimp on that, a little pinch. Kind of like pinching your, you pinch a pie. Now that's starting to look like a pie. Yeah, and I just take the excess crust yeah. off with a little bit of a yeah. squeeze on that, so pull it down, and have a pie. Just like mom made. Mm -hmm. I just happen to have one finished. This is the miracle of it. And there is our finished product. Boy, does that look good. Okay, guys, moving right along. Would you like to do a mocktail or would you like to do a nice baked brie? I think Evan should pick. I think you should pick. I think we'll move on to the mocktail. Good choice. I've been wanting to do the mocktail all day. Boy, do I need one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next, start with one pitcher full of ice. There we go. All right. Then we're going to add ginger ale to that. Simple ginger ale, any kind of ginger ale you like. We happen to have whole ginger ale in the school, so by using that tonight. Sorry about that. No problem. All right, so two bottles of the ginger ale. If you're going to do for a large group, a two liter will work with this. Feed a, you'll uh, feed about eight people with a two liter. All right, guys. Perfect. Now we're going to use some pineapple juice. We still have two more ingredients to add, so let's stop here and we'll add the rest of the ginger ale if we need it. Very true. Get your pineapple juice. This is a champagne mocktail. No alcohol. All right, we're going to put one cup of the pineapple juice. You have your one cup measuring right there. Gonna leak out these holes. Go right, go right up to the holes. In there. That's where you stop. That's your line. Oh, uh, okay. All right, you're gonna add that to that. Perfect. And Evan, we're gonna use a white grape juice. You're gonna add two cups of that. So two of those. One. And two. This is a good color. And Nick, if you give that a little light stir, because you don't want to upset all the fizz in there, because the fizz is what makes the drink. Maybe like something like this. That looks good to me. And then you're going to top that with some fresh raspberries. How many? As many as you like, Nick. I like my mocktails a little tart, so I might put a little uh, extra. Beautiful. That should do it. <laughs> and there's a holiday mocktail. Okay, moving right along, guys. You guys are doing awesome. Oh, it's all you, Karen. We're moving right along here very quickly, and I think you guys can probably handle this at home. What do you think? I think so. Feeling confident? Yes, very. All right, how about feeding 300 kids at school? Oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> all right, why don't you open that package? All right, roll out your crust right here. Again, one store-bought pie crust. All right, now for this, this brie, I use a sweet, triple sweet cream brie, and that's a store-bought brie. What are the origins of this cheese? You're gonna ask me a question like that? It's probably some sort of cow. <laughs> These guys are jokers. All right, and um, the base of this is going to be a preserve. You can use strawberry, you can use apricot, whatever preserves you like. Today we're going to use an apricot. 
And you're gonna give a healthy portion of the apricot preserves at the bottom. Don't go any bigger than your brie. So you're gonna put it right on the pie crust there. There you go. You just, just spread it out. That looks good. Is that what you want to see? That looks perfect. And then Nick, we're going to use a little bit of almonds in that too. A little nice little portion of almonds. Right along this? Yep. That looks good. And then you set your brie right on top of it. Wow. She would have set it right like that. Because we're going to top it with more preserves and more almonds. Okay. Nick, go for it. Why don't you do the preserve? Switch it up a little bit. No? That's how the breeze actually made. Isn't it wax? That's how they form the cheese. That looks awesome. Good job, Nick. Thanks, Evans. Evans. This is a tricky pot. You want to try it? We gotta fold the dough over the brie so it can bake. Uh, you want to try and fold it? I'll give it a shot. All right. You show me what it's done. Let's go. Good night. Good night. Perfect. These guys are professionals. Oh, Karen. I think we should hire you. And that's it. Very simple. Very easy. After that comes out of the oven, you won't believe it. I suggest that you bake with a smooth side up. That way it doesn't explode all over the place, because it will. It's happened to me before. So trial and error, we learn that way. So you bake that in the oven, same deal. 300 degrees, we're gonna do about 15 minutes on this, or until it's all golden brown. Once it's golden brown, you'll see the preserves start coming out of the bottom. It is done. Nice. Just so happened to have a done one. That's why they call it the miracle oven. What do you guys think of that? Sounds like I need a bigger plate. Would you like to give it a try? Would I ever? Nick? Okay. Evan? Cheers. Cheers. What do you think, guys? Mm. <laughs> All right. So these are our tips for today. I hope you enjoyed everything. And thank you very much, Nick and Evan. This was awesome. Thank you. You guys did a wonderful job. I learned a lot. Thank you for having us, Karen. Thank you very much.